Hello everybody, my name is John Cox. I'm a software engineer at Google and I work on open source education software. And this is a video demonstration of the new third-party auth module for Open edX. Open edX is the leading open source online education platform. It comes with two major applications, a content management system that authors, teachers use to make online education content, and a learning management system that students use to engage with that content on the internet. Um, what I'm going to do is show you how authentication works in edX without the new feature and then with the new feature. There is a separate video that shows you how to set up the new feature, and there are two articles, and I'll link to all of this in the description, uh, that, sh that explain in writing um, what I'm showing in these videos, and also one of them is an in-depth technical article that explains how to extend the new module um, to add new ways of signing in. Uh, what the new module does is it allows your students to sign into your open edX deployment with a third-party authentication provider. Third-party authentication providers could be commercial entities like Google or LinkedIn. Um, there are Google and LinkedIn implementations checked in to open edX that you can just turn on today. And the system is extensible, so if you want Twitter or Facebook or GitHub or whatever you want, you can, you can do that. You can also extend the system to work with uh, non-commercial uh, single sign-on solutions, so a university single sign-on system or the Mozilla Persona system. Um, you can enable those as well. So what I have running, what you're looking at right now, this is just my laptop, and I've got Open edX installed on this laptop. And again, I'll put it in the description, a link to how to get that set up. I am using um, the dev stack that edX supplies, and I'm running it under Vagrant. So I've got a virtual machine uh, on my laptop here. And I have my web browser and my terminal window, and my uh, edX deployment is running with the feature disabled. The feature is disabled by default, and the way account registration works, I click on register now, and I have this form. And I can say, you know, I'm going to use bogus values here, but I can say I'm example at example.com. I can set a password. I can say my username is example. My full name is example. And then I'm going to skip down to the bottom of this form, agree to the terms of service in the honor code, and create my account. And now edX is going to take me to my dashboard. And you can see right here, it, you know, it has my name and my email address and so on. I'm not in any classes. And it has my username up here at the top. And you can see that they've thanked me for registering and they've said that my account is inactive. And what this means is if I were to sign out, I couldn't sign back in yet because my account isn't active and they um, email you an activation email. This is very standard authentication stuff, right? Now, because I'm running a development server, that activation email doesn't actually get sent out, um, but I can get it in my logs here. So that's why I have this terminal running, window running. So I'm gonna grab this URL, I'm gonna visit it, activate the account, uh, I'm gonna sign out over here, and then I'm going to go to the login page. And here I can give my email address, my password, and I can sign in. And it takes me to my dashboard. Now I don't have any warning about not being there. All right. So um, I am going to stop my server. And now I'm going to turn on the uh, third-party auth feature. I'm not going to explain how to configure the third-party auth feature in this video. But again, check the description if you're curious about that. Um, so I'm going to turn that feature on, and I'm going to start my server back up. I'm going to close my browser window here because I want a completely new browser window without any credentials in it at all. So you can see that I'm running Chrome in incognito mode, so I don't have any of my accounts that I'm usually signed into in this browser. And I'm just waiting for my server to come back up here. And great, we're back. All right, I'm going to hide this developer console. and. Go to the register form again. And now we see some new UX at the top of the page. We see that there are buttons for signing in with Google or signing in with LinkedIn. And then we see the form. And if I didn't want to sign in with Google or LinkedIn, I could just fill out the form like I did before. Um, but let's see what happens when I sign in with Google. So it's going to take me over to Google's server at this point. So I, you can see in the uh, address bar here, I'm on Google's server. And I can sign in 
uh, with a testing account I made for this video. And here, uh, Google is asking me, is it uh, the server that sent you over here is asking to see your email address and some basic information about your account, like your name and so on. Is that OK? So it, I went and signed in. So I did the challenge response. And if I typoed my password or whatever, I'm over on Google server. Google owns this UX. Um, so by the time I get to this page here, this access grant page, now every provider is different. When we sign in with LinkedIn, we'll see that. The UX is different for LinkedIn. Um, and Google, and it's different for Twitter, it's different for university SSO systems. So what Google is doing right now is it is telling me, here is the list of permissions that the open edX deployment would like to have. Is that okay? And if I click accept, this is gonna send me back to edX. We're back on this form, but you see it has populated the form with some values. So it knows my email address. This saves your users some typing. Now I can customize these, of course. You know, if I just want my public username to be John M. Cox, I can do that, right? And I agree to the honor code and the terms of service. I create the account. It takes me to my dashboard. And then just like before, I have to activate the account before I can do anything else. I'm going to do that grabbing the URL from my logs. Again, in production, you would get emails sent to your email address. And then I'm going to sign out. And I'm actually going to close this browser down. Uh, well, I'm not going to close the browser down. Um, let me just explain what's going on here. So I've signed out of edX. But remember, I signed into Google in this browser window. So I still have my Google credentials. If I go to Gmail, for example, I'm signed into Google. This is going to take me to my mailbox, right? Because I have credentials in this browser. So I go to log in. And now there are some more choices on the login form. I could, uh, there's, you know, username and password login like before. Now I didn't set a password uh, with Google. I can, I can, you know, say I forgot my password and I can reset it and I can sign in with the password just like before. Uh, but I can also click this sign in with Google button and then bam, one click, I'm into edX. All right, now on the dashboard, there's one other thing I wanna show off. Right here, we list all of the third-party authentication providers that this deployment supports. Um, we enabled Google and LinkedIn, so you can see them both. And you can see that my Google account is linked to my edX account because we signed in with it before and we approved the access grant. You can see that my LinkedIn account is not linked, right? Now, I can go over to Google and I can, re remember, I granted permissions to edX. Now, I can go to my profile page over at Google and I can revoke that grant if I no longer trust the edX deployment. Uh, it's also important that on the edX side, we have UX for users to be in complete control of the access grants that they've made. So I can unlink my Google account here. And now if I were to sign out, I could no longer sign in with Google. Uh, let me link my LinkedIn account so you can see what that's like. So you can see LinkedIn has different UX. I'm on LinkedIn servers now, if you look in the address bar of the browser. Uh, so over on LinkedIn servers, I again have a testing account, and I can type in my password, right? And I allow access. Now, LinkedIn, the UX is a little different than Google. It's not in two steps. You can see that it's saying here, hey, this example app wants your profile overview, your name, photo, headline, et cetera, and you sign in, and you do this all in one step on LinkedIn. So I'm going to allow access. And this takes me back to my dashboard. And now I can see that LinkedIn is linked to my edX account. And if I log out and then go to log in, and I choose LinkedIn this time. Now, LinkedIn, again, the experience is different from Google. LinkedIn is going to ask me to authenticate here. Um, this is this testing account? Um, so LinkedIn, it's not one click. With Google, it is. Um, I have to re-authenticate here, and I'm in. Um, I can, you know, unlink my LinkedIn account. I could link my Google account. I could have them both linked if I wanted. And then when I come back to the login page, I can pick. So uh, I look forward to launching this on edX.org as soon as we can, and I look forward to all um, other people who run edX having the option to enable a whole host of different third-party authentication providers. Uh, this is 
good for your users. It's convenient because they don't have to manage additional passwords and so on. It's more secure because they don't have to manage additional passwords. And it's great for people who run these deployments, you know, whether it's at a university or um, whether you're a commercial entity, because you can give your users a much easier way to sign in and out of your application. Thanks very much.